Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Tarot Map. Guys, I've been trying to record a video for a while now. I'm not sure what's going on, or maybe I am. I actually had a reading recently for myself. You know, it's good to be a reader who gets readings and see how other readers do things. Um, and I was made aware of um, perfections. I had a reading with Gemini Bread, and perfection is a Hellenistic astrology approach or method and it um like he told me that you know by perfections which is like a cycle of your ascendant being measured i'm in like a 12th house so in a cycle of completion he asked me how was this year for you you know and i felt like wow it's a huge year actually it wasn't an easy year but it was a huge year we we have moved places we have um you know bought a house um, it was really stressful, of course, the big moves, the looking for the house, the selling of the apartment, um, you know, always like financial kind of strict um, issues, uh, doing a lot of, like a lot of energy just went into it, you know, so I felt with, just for myself as a person, I've grown a lot and I arrived or I am... I should say I am still arriving in this new place. Um, for my work, I, it was a hard year. I haven't probably done as many readings as I usually would have done just because my energy was a little bit split between, you know, doing what needs to be done here in in real life. <laughs> Let's call it like this. And then, you know, having my energy for for my work. <clears throat> so... Yeah, it's been a little bit of an off and up and down year. And as you know, because I like talking about it, I'm still um, like in the perimenopause. So I have those periods when my hormones kind of really play tricks on me and it feels like I have fucking like no control over it. So I get a few days when I'm like really sad or you know, then and other times when it's all like perfect and the world is so crazy, like I just, yeah, when you're empathetic, you know, like, like you, we feel it all, we all connect it and I just don't speak so much about genocide and Israel just because I had my fair share of Ukrainian uh, war happening like last year and I have my opinions, I talk to my friends on both sides and uh, it's just horrible what's happening and I hate seeing that m huge division that's happening in all communities and people who have different opinions suddenly become enemies you know I really don't appreciate this at, about our culture that um, if you have a different opinion to me I basically treat you like you're the worst enemy that there is this is not how I would like to live. This is not how I would like to see the world evolve. It's repeating the same fucking cycle. But yeah, it's it's something that I would like to, I think, do privately this time. <clears throat> so saying this, let's move into the bullshit things <laughs> and I show you some decks. <laughs> I'm sorry, just I know it's ridiculous to be like, but you know, some of us have the privilege to have life and um, I'm just going to use it. So let's speak about some autumn mood decks. Um, I will show you only three decks, so don't, you know, don't run away just yet. Uh, this Bestiary of Women by Hannah Tricor. Uh, I think she's still, you know, uh, I think this deck is still on Kickstarter and I have shown uh, all the cards from this deck. It's basically a collection of different feminine beings, not just deities, but different deities or beings from very, very wild uh, pantheon of women, different cultures. And um, Kanya is also working on a book for this uh, for this deck. It's with her original artwork and I speak more about it in my full review, which I'm going to link right now. Uh, she has sent me this preview copy. Um, the cuts may look a little bit different, you know, a little bit different paper, but um, 
the artwork is awesome and if you liked Hania's art, art you are going to probably appreciate it she's writing the book together with her mom so I'm just like you know checking this out because she used a lot of beings um from a lot of different cultures that I actually never heard of so I always love to see tarot or uh, card decks as books you know so that we can actually learn things so uh, the next deck I was sent by Rockpool Publishing. It's Earth and Bone Oracle. I really like it. <coughs> I didn't expect to like it that much. Um, the booklet is quite okay as well. It's not the, you know, um, the fluffiest of the books. Sometimes, I'm sorry to say, but like sometimes when I read these books, I'm thinking, are they written for children? Like, what the fuck? So this one is okay. It's quite like concise uh, you get the name of I mean the number of the card you get the kind of keyword you have other like three main keywords there's a little write-up um, and you get some affirmation and you know it doesn't go for seven pages and you go you kind of think what are you writing about <laughs> so it's basically just um, just this okay so um, Let's. I want to show you just the cards because I showed I showed them in my recent um, video about like readings for the eclipse. Uh, but let's just put some better lighting on so we can see those cards um, better. So it's the gilding is really cool. Okay, it's this like turquoise. I just love how those mass produced decks look these days. All right, so let's just go through through this deck. Um, let me just see how it's best for me to show it to you. So, <laughs> let's just see. I'm going to do some close-ups so you can see. So you get a roots, for example, so the name of the card, the image, and then those three keywords. I like when oracles are set up this way. <clears throat> this is the bag, the box, and it's for um, people who like, you know, skulls, bones. It's Earth and Bone Oracle, so the name suggests also, you know, certain um, style of images. I actually really enjoy it, and you can check this video. I use this deck for the readings uh, for each uh, sign, so you can see how the cards read. I think it's really intuitive deck so the images give you hints the colors you know the words the name they're very suggestive in some way but also leave a room for interpretation uh, and yeah I, I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying it I was surprised you know if you're reviewing for a publishing house they ask you which decks you want so I'm usually very selective and picky because very often I'm not particularly keen of the decks that come out and I don't, you know, I don't need all the fucking decks to lie on my shelves and I will never use them. So I usually take like one or two <coughs> and sometimes none, you know, depending. Uh, but yeah, I thought like I try this one all, I wasn't sure. But there was something piquing my interest and I actually really like it. I'm surprised. This is a cool deck. So we have Owl, Serpent, Faith. And how many cards are here? Do we know? 42 cards. So it's maybe not the, you know, the biggest oracle deck, but it kind of doesn't feel bad shuffling. Uh, if you have been with me for a while, you know that I'm not a fan of small oracle decks. And I think recently I thought about it. It's actually about shuffling and using a deck that has much less cards than, um, than tarot deck because I mostly work with tarot deck so you get used to these 48 cards you know I mean for 78 cards and then when you get a deck that suddenly has 35 or 36 cards it's like oh I don't know it just makes me uncomfortable shuffling and I just not enjoying it that much so 
yeah, it's just, I think it plays a big part in this. So I'm curious what you guys think about this particular deck. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually really a fan of it. And thank you, Rockpool, for sending it. On this mushies as well. Yeah, it's really good. And I enjoy the color palette. It's very spooky season, kind of this time of the year deck. Unless people like to indulge <laughs> in deep summer <laughs> with imagery like this, that's okay too. So this is the Herb and Bone Oracle. Let's just pull one card for us. What can we pick? It's a message and it's Apprentice. So you get this... Um, Tag. It's like a eclipsed moon nearly, like bloody moon. And we have somebody indulging in like a ritual or something. So it's higher education, beliefs and wisdom. Um, so it's about probably learning something. It's about um, maybe widening your scope of knowledge, um, but also practicing what you have learned and extracting wisdom from the knowledge, right? So if we want to just look at the book quickly, um, I'm just going to keep it for you. You can take a look, but it's pretty okay. It's like easily written and quite simple, but you know, it gets to the point. So affirmation would be for us, I am Raise the highest version of myself. I'm willing to believe that by raising my vibration and I attract more of what I deserve, I'm aware everything is aligned with divine timing. And that's so true because I have been trying to do a couple of classes and it's just timing is just feels like timing is not right. And when I got this reading, I realized I'm in the closing, you know, in the closing period, not in the opening period. So then the last deck that I want to share is this Red Thread Tarot. Um, and this is a deck by Linda Hill. I have all the decks by Linda. I love Linda's decks. This one is based on the myth of Ariadne and Dionysus. And she writes here that 5,000 years ago, an advanced Bronze Age civilization was fund funded, founded and became known as Minoan Crete. At the very heart of this society was nature, which was honored in the form of the great mother goddess and was highly revered, revered by the people in their everyday life, ritual and artwork. This tarot will tra traverse the myth of Ariadne and Dionysus. You have heard the call. There is so much for you to encounter in the labyrinth. For this is where you find shadow and light, tears, sadness and joy, wounds and love. You may feel challenged and overcome at times, excited too, but always full of love and devotion. Walk the pathways of initiation where you will find unity and wholeness. The labyrinth awaits your presence. So Linda, um, she has sent me this deck like ages ago. And guys, I just, I don't know. I just couldn't use it. I totally didn't feel like going into the fucking labyrinth. Maybe I'm ready right now, but I want to uh, dive deeper into this deck. So again, this is just a flip through. Um, I can't do a proper review of it just yet. What I can say, it's, you know, if you have her previous decks, it's the same card size. So it's quite a large tarot deck so for people who don't like big decks this is probably not a, not a deck for you unless you you know you're a fan of Ariadne and uh, Dionysus myth and it's in Linda's art, art style so of course um, you will recognize it's by her and um, can I say anything more the book comes that comes with the deck is done it's exactly the same way as her uh, um, previous deck which is oh my god about the matter and persephone red seed star so this is red thread star this was red seed star and um it's like the same box have this steady box really beautiful colors the artwork is you know amazing uh, if you're a fan of this particular artwork i love linda's art 
and the book is well organized by colors and you can see that she changed you know the names of of the of certain arcana but also of the court cards and of suits so blades for swords then we have threads uh, is this for wands? I think so. When we have discs for pentacles and cups. So if you're a fan of Minoan culture, Crete, um, you will probably enjoy this deck a lot. Based on, like loosely on Rider Waite Smith, but you won't recognize it. So I know a couple of people who, <clears throat> you know, don't like Rider Waite Smith unless <clears throat> the cards are made in a way that they can't recognize. I wish Linda did an oracle deck and like with plants. I think it would be so cool. Um, so yeah, this is um, Red Fred Starro and I'm just going to start reading the book. So if Linda watches this, I'm so sorry, Linda. I just, you know me, I, 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 if I could, I would. <laughs> but I also don't want to like bullshit anybody and I had to be ready to go into this uh, this myth and it just didn't pull me in before but I'm hoping now look at this queen empress Whoa. so yeah I'm just going to dive into this and take a look and see uh, you know how that transverse uh, traverse into my reality I don't really fucking want to go into the uh, labyrinth I want to go out of the labyrinth but you know it is what it is, right? Okay, so this is the Red Seed Tarot, I mean Red Fred Tarot. And if you're a fan of like Demeter and Persephone, you can go for the Red Seed Tarot, which, you know, it's similar in artwork, just it's different myth. It's about uh, Eleusinian mysteries and so on. So, um, yeah, Red Seeds and Red Freds, and of course, Red Seeds Oracles that I love by Linda. Okay, so autumnal kind of vibes and uh, let's see how this plays out for me uh, i just wanted to show you just for people who are interested in the chakra work and this is also sent to me by rockpool and it's by dr ravi ratan and dr minu ratan and i wanted to check it out because he's an aromatherapist so apparently there should be some um you know information or chakras and aroma which I kind of like. Uh, it's a book that has, you know, various compilation on information on chakras. It's from their perspective and they are Hindu. Um, he is from Mumbai and Minu is, Dr. Minu Ratan is, this is his wife. She's a psychoaromatherapist and healer. So, you know, I was just curious. So this book is dedicated to the guru. So we can see it's all from like Hindu um, perspective and it's based on, yeah, tantric approach, I think, to chakras. So again, I haven't read it yet. I just wanted to show it to you if anybody likes books on chakras and studies this topic might be something to take a look at um, at Rockpool. All right. Thanks for listening to me and I see you soon. Bye.